Hi, I'm Mary Dittman, and I'm an award-winning business professor on the collegiate level, and I'm the creator of Job Hunting 101, College on Fleek, and Wonderful Life. And in this video, I want to talk about the importance of getting yourself together physically with respect to your, your physical health. And you've heard a million tips and tricks and videos, probably podcasts, about how to get healthy. My original version of this blog um, that I wrote on this topic, originally that first draft had different ideas about what you should do for exercise and how you should eat, but I'm not a nutritionist and I'm not a personal trainer. I've had no formal training on any of those things. I've never had what people would call a serious weight problem. I have been unhappy with my weight. I'm five foot six and um, there have been times where I weighed probably 35 or 40 pounds more than I do now. But because of the way that my body is shaped, I don't tend to carry weight very much on my waist. I'll carry it on my hips and my thighs more. Uh, although since I've been getting older, I'll carry it in my belly sometimes too, but mostly my hips and thighs. And so I was able to carry that weight and not necessarily look like I was overweight. But listen, whether, whether you absolutely need to lose 50 pounds or you just need to lose five pounds, it doesn't matter. If you're unhappy in your body, that's a problem. And it's really hard to get your life when you feel unhappy physically. And that's what I want to address in this video. Weight loss experts and coaches talk about the best way to lock into any type of health program and to stay motivated is you have to have a why. You have to have something that when that plate of chocolate chip cookies is in front of you, you have to have a yes that is bigger than saying yes to the cookies. And I just know for myself, there have been times where I've thought, you know, I've put on some weight. I'm like, oh, I'm, I hate this. Like, I hate the way I look. I hate the way I feel. There have been times where I even thought, you know, I hate my body. And I'm not proud to say that because the truth is I'm healthy and I'm strong. And so I feel really convicted when I see someone who really has health issues or is in a wheelchair, or has debilitating back pain, and I can walk. And so it, I don't want to stay in that place of being miserable and, quote, hating my body, but I have been in that space before. And there would even be times where I would be in that place of, I got to get this weight off, but it's like I just couldn't stick with it. I'd eat right for a day or two, and then I'd derail again and, and make a bunch of bad food choices. What I would do then is I would work out the next day for two hours. In fact, for a long time, I would work out every day for two hours. And it wasn't because I enjoyed it. It was because I was punishing myself. I either had eaten something the day before that I felt like I shouldn't have. I didn't, I shouldn't have done that. That was bad. So now I'm going to punish myself by running for an hour and then lifting weights for an hour. Of course, then I would feel like I had justified an extra portion of calories and then I, so I would overeat again and it would just be a spiral. Or I would just work out for two hours because I felt like, well, I don't, I don't like the way I look and, and, and I need to, you know, I'm going to have to do this to get my body you know, to where it needs to be because it's not, it doesn't look right. And so I was really just always coming from this place of being mad at myself and hating myself. And there are a lot of different books on this subject. One of, one of the books that I've read, it's, um, I can't remember the author's name, but it's Women, Weight, and God. 
And one of the things that she says in this book is that as women in particular, we think that if we berate ourselves and punish ourselves enough, then we will suddenly love ourselves enough to take care of ourselves. And there is no instance in which that is true. If, if you berate a child, for example, on and on and on about you're lazy and you're worthless and you're terrible, they don't wake up one day and think, you know what, I'm a great person. I really want to do a good job. You just beat them down till they think, you're right, I'm terrible. And it's the same thing with us. So I want to talk right now about, well, how do you find that why? And everybody has their own why. And, and let me just share a little bit more about my own personal issues with um, weight and food, etc. I've never had um, an eating disorder. I will say I've had disordered eating. And I will, so I'll be really super structured. And then I tend to eat my feelings a lot and do what I call foothing which is soothing with food. So I'm happy, so I'm gonna celebrate with food. I'm sad, I'm gonna comfort myself with food. I'm lonely, let me eat something. I'm bored, I'll just eat something. I wanna feel better, I'm gonna eat something. There have even been times where my stomach was a little bit upset, probably because of something I ate the day before. And so because my stomach felt kind of weird, I'd, I'd eat a cookie, which makes no sense at all. But I, I love, I'm a sweets person, sweets and carbs. And so I just felt like, well, you know, or, a, oh, a piece of bread with toast with butter on it. That'll make me feel better. And for a long time, I would say, well, I just don't have any self-control when it comes to food. But I noticed I have lots of self-control because many times I'll have a bag of baby carrots in my fridge and it'll spoil because I won't eat it. So I, I'm able to say no to the carrots. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can always say no to a, a second apple. If I've eaten my apple for the day and you offer me one, oh, no, I already had an apple today. But if you offer me a piece of pie and then a second one, I'm not going to say, oh, no, I already had pie today. <laughs> See, sure, I'll take it. And so I had a very disordered relationship with food and a lot of struggling with cravings and obsessing over food. And for a while, what I would do is I would eat very structured and regimented calorie-wise for six days. And then I would always have a cheat day. And I'm going to tell you something. I would fantasize about that cheat day. Oh, I'd be planning it out the whole week. And I would go to the grocery store and I would buy just whatever I wanted. And I would spend the whole day on my cheat day just eating as much as I wanted of anything I wanted. Now, unfortunately, what I was doing was I was un... So for six days, I was managing my calories. I was eating healthfully. And I was probably losing some of the weight I wanted to lose. But on day seven, I would undo everything I had done. It would be just like if you spent six days cleaning up your house and it was all nice and tidy... And then on day number seven, you just went through and you just kind of pulled stuff out of drawers and threw things on the floor and left everything around. I mean, your house, you would have undone everything that you had done in six days, and that's what I would do. And then, of course, so if that cheat day was on a Friday, then, of course, Saturday, the whole day, I'd, be, I'd have a food hangover. I'd feel horrible. I'd feel bloated, and I'd have inflammation, and I would just feel awful, and I'd be mad at myself. So I would put myself through a grueling workout. I'd feel all bad all day Saturday. Then Sunday, I would kind of be starting to feel a little bit better in hopes that by Monday, when I'd have to go to work, that the food hangover would be behind me. But of course, by then, I was already plotting out the next one. So here, I, I was really losing three days every time I would do that. And when I finally, I finally started to learn about this and, and read, and I was like, gosh, you know what? Yeah, I'm, I'm really just sabotaging myself on my cheat day. And I, listen, there are a lot of programs out there. And there's, you know, paleo and um, ketogenic and no carb and low carb and intermittent fasting and 
you know, high low calories and I don't know, like whatever. And as far as exercise, I mean, heck, there's CrossFit and there's Pio and there's, you know, whatever. Um, I can just tell you what I discovered and what works for me. I'm not suggesting that this is for you and, and I want to right up front say before you ever take on any kind of nutrition program or exercise program, you really need to check with your doctor uh, or your other healthcare professionals, meaning if you have a, a therapist that you're seeing, your doctor, etc. I'm just going to tell you, I'm just telling you my story. I, um, this is way back in the day, um, before Weight Watchers had points. Okay, it's been a while. And one of my girlfriends was on Weight Watchers, and she was losing weight. And so I asked her, like, well, I, I don't, what is Weight Watchers and how does it work? And she said, well, you count your calories. And I said, well, how do you do that? And she said, well, you have to measure your food. <laughs> so this was a foreign concept to me. I had never tried this before. It was portion control and calorie counting. Now, I've, I've tried. There's some um, voices out there that say you don't need to count calories. Just eat healthy whole foods and, and you'll be fine. For me, I can eat healthy whole foods and I'll gain weight. Because, I'll listen, I'll eat avocados and almond butter and cashews. and um, I'm a vegetarian. I do eat fish. But, um, you know, I'll, I'll eat vegetarian or even vegan, and I'll eat these whole foods, and, and I've put on weight doing that. For me, calorie restriction has proved to be effective for me. I never starve myself, ever. These people who are like, I just was so busy working, I totally forgot to eat. I'm like, how do you forget to eat? I never forget to eat. I'll be finishing up lunch and thinking about when is my snack going to be. And when I finish my snack, I'm thinking about dinner. Here's what I eat every day. I eat breakfast every day. I eat lunch every day. Then I have an afternoon snack every day. Then I have dinner. And then I have a bedtime snack. There you go. I usually try to be around 1,500 to 1,700 calories. I never skip a meal. I do not take any weight loss supplements or diet pills. I used to. I used to take things like that. And again, it was because I was punishing. I was mad at myself. You know, I'm going to take this pill because I need to... Da, 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 da. And I, I will clue you in. As you get older, even if you are eating right and you're exercising, many times just because of hormonal shifts... I don't know if men struggle with this. I know women do. Men do these days because of the, the American diet. But I can just only speak from a woman's perspective. You can be eating right. You can be exercising. And you may encounter low energy, fatigue, brain fog. But I, I want to at least just share with you some things that I've learned about feeling your best physically and why it even matters. First of all, it, it's not normal to be fatigued and exhausted all the time. Actually, I say that it's, it's probably the norm. Um, as, as of the time of my filming this, two thirds of Americans are either overweight or, or obese. One third of Americans are obese, but two thirds are overweight or obese. And listen, if you're overweight, you're tired because you're carrying around extra weight. You're probably not sleeping well. You may have some sleep apnea. And so it probably actually is the norm to feel tired and exhausted and you have brain fog. And so you drink caffeine or you eat sugar uh, just to try to kind of get going. And um, for example, I, one of my friends who's overweight, she talked about, well, I never eat breakfast. I'm just not hungry in the morning. And then a couple sentences later, she said, yeah, and then every night I just can't help it. I find myself, you know, just eating a box of cookies while I'm watching TV at 9 or 10 at night. I thought, well, no wonder you're not hungry in the morning because 
you're eating a whole bunch of food the night before, of course you're not hungry. You can have a why, like I want to lose weight, or I want to look good for the reunion, or I want to look good for my sister's wedding, and, and all those are fine. Some of those can be temporary though. They may not last long enough. So I'll just, I would just want to share with you some ideas about whys that have helped me. One why that has really helped me has been that it was pointed out to me that when you look at anyone who's successful, they have a health program that they're following. And I can tell you from personal experience, having interviewed very successful CEOs and high-level executives, every one of them who is successful has told me, well, I get up at 4 a.m., because I, I like to work out before I get on this conference call with Europe. So I get up at 4 because I have to be out of my house at 5.30 to be at the office before 6. And so these men and women, if they have to get up early, they do that. When they work out when they travel. They eat healthy. But they have a plan for their health. And we've all heard that analogy that's been so overused but it's so true about when you're on the airplane and they tell you if the if the cabin depressurizes the oxygen masks are going to drop down and you need to put your mask on before you help someone else and the reason for that is let's say if I'm traveling with a child or an elderly person and they can't put their own mask on there's when the cabin depressurizes that means there's no oxygen so most people, that's, you know, that's a kind of a panic situation. And by the time you're, you're moving and you're doing all this to get that person situated, you've run out of oxygen and you're probably going to pass out. And if they couldn't put on their own mask, they probably can't help you. That's why, because they can sit there calmly, hold their breath while you real quick put your mask on and then you can get a mask on them. That's why. And it's the same thing in your physical body. For me, I'm, I'm a college professor. And I'm in, about to start my 18th year of being a teacher at the collegiate level, and I love it. But that means I'm always around 18 to 22-year-olds. That's it. That, that's who I'm around all the time. They never get older. As soon as they're 22, they're gone. They're replaced by another 18-year-old. And I figured out real quick. I've got to be able to keep up with them. If they invite me, if I'm invited to a student organization to speak to them, it's usually at night, and I've got to be up. I have to be on my game. They can't be like, oh, Professor Dittman's really exhausted again. They, they don't want to hear that, <laughs> okay? And I've got to be mentally sharp. And when they show up in my office with a life crisis and they need someone to talk to, I can't be sitting there thinking, Oh my gosh, like I, I wish I wouldn't have had those cookies last night. I'm so exhausted or I'm feeling really crabby because I haven't taken care of myself. If you have children, you, you have to be on your game physically in order to provide for them and keep up with them and be there for them. Not only just, it's not even about can you go run in the park with your kids and that's important. But can you even just focus on what they're saying? You know, when you're, when you're exhausted, you just can't, you don't even have the energy to turn off the TV and really focus in and say, hey, what's going on? So that is, is a why for me, is that I just wanna feel good. And again, as I said, the older I get, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of days where I just don't feel good. And I wanna feel good, I wanna have energy. I want to enjoy my life and I want to be able to participate. And so taking care of my physical self is really important because I've learned that when I feel bad physically, it's just like when you have the flu, okay? Or if you had a really bad cold and, you know, if you have like a really bad cold or even just super bad allergies, it's like you have cotton in your head. You can't think of anything, you know, Lord help you if you had to come up with some big idea to present to your boss or, you know, if you're mom wanted to have some big chat about, you know, some big life event and you're just kind of like, whoa, hold on, you know, can, can we delay this for another day? You don't even have the energy to clean out your closet because you're so exhausted. And, and I just, I want to feel good because I want to be able to participate in my own life. And so for me, that's my why is I have 
things I want to do in my life. I have a life I want to live and I have things I, I want to live in an organized, clean place. That's important to me. But if I'm exhausted, I, I can't keep my house clean. And so that's a small example, but that's important to me. I want to have time with my friends. And so if I crawl home after work and all I can do is lie on the couch and watch TV because I'm so tired, and then one of my girlfriends says, hey, let's go, get, let's go have dinner, I don't want to be so exhausted that I think, oh, I just can't do it. And so I want to be able to participate in my life. And so I realized that taking care of my physical body is an important part of that. And it's not just about having the mental energy or the physical energy to go do things. It's also about the emotional toll that being unhappy with your body takes. When you're miserable and you hate your body and you're embarrassed about how you look and you, um, you don't like any, you know, you don't like your thighs or you don't like your tummy or you don't like your arms or whatever your thing is, then you just feel bad emotionally and you're really not available emotionally for people to connect with you. That anger that you have at yourself comes out and people can see that. They're going to pick up on it. And you might think that you're keeping it hidden, but it's there. And it's not good for you. And it's certainly not allowing you to have the life that you want to have in terms of being close to your family and your friends and getting along with your coworkers and your neighbors. So there's the emotional toll of feeling angry and guilty and ashamed where if you are taking the proper steps to take care of yourself physically, you'll have more physical energy, you'll have more mental clarity, and you'll have more emotional energy that's available to participate in your life. Like I said, there are a lot of programs on the market for nutrition and for exercise. Um, for me, I probably around four years ago, I went on a serious nutrition and exercise program um, that has worked for me. I've kept my weight off for four years. Um, I'm pretty much at the weight I want to be at within a couple of pounds. And again, I don't take any diet pills. I don't skip meals. For me, I eat healthy whole foods. I count my calories. I use an app on my phone and track what I'm eating. Um, I, t I do work out six days a week, normally only 30 to 45 minutes. Sometimes I'll do a second workout in a day, not all the time. And if I ever do a second workout in a day, it's not because I'm punishing myself. It's because I think like, hey, I feel really great. I think I want to go do some kickboxing. Like it's fun. Not because, well, I ate that brownie yesterday, so now I'm going to have to do a second workout. That mindset I found just, I don't feel good when I'm treating myself like that. I have learned for myself that I need to get enough sleep and I need to get seven to nine hours of sleep at night. Um, I drink water. Now, I, I went for about three or four years, four I think, three or four, where I was completely caffeine free. I will say I have introduced caffeine and so these days I will have one cup of coffee in the morning and frequently I'll have a cup of hot tea in the afternoon. Um, otherwise, I don't drink sodas or uh, sweetened beverages, fruit juices, anything like that. I just don't like the way that I feel when I drink those, so I drink water. Um, I, I exercise. I make sure I get cardio and I lift weights and do some strength training. I do yoga. A big part of why I do yoga is because I have a chronic back issue and when I was in college I discovered yoga and it really helped my back and my sciatica and so when I keep up with my yoga practice I um, feel better my back feels better and so that is a big part of why I do yoga plus it just feels good and it helps me to be mentally focused and centered 
So whatever program you find that works for you, the key is really just to be consistent. I've had friends that'll tell me that, well, nothing works for me. I've tried everything and nothing works. Trying to eat healthy for three days is not going to, that's not going to do it. And you may not really see results in three days. You might, but you may not. And the older you get, it used to be if I wanted to lose five pounds in a week, when I was in my 20s, I would just never have dessert and I'd go for a walk at night around the block and I'd lose five pounds in a week. I couldn't lose five pounds right now. If you, to if you told me you were going to pay me $10 million, I couldn't lose five pounds in a week. Even when I've had food poisoning or a stomach virus, I can't lose five pounds in a week. If you are willing to stick with something and make it something you can do. Um, I, I, I like the workout programs that I use because I can stick with them. I'm not trying to go to the gym and do something for three hours a day that I'm not going to be able to, to do every day for the rest of my life. It's, I do things that I enjoy. Um, I don't want to train for a marathon because I don't enjoy that. And um, I don't enjoy riding the stationary bike, for example. It's not my thing. Some people love it. That's why I don't, I don't go to spin classes. I know it's a great workout. Some of my friends really love it. It's just not my thing. I just don't enjoy it. I, it doesn't excite me. It makes my bum hurt, too. I just don't enjoy it. So I hope I've given you some things to think about with respect to your physical health. And I believe in the saying, progress, not perfection. And it's not about you need to be a size two, or you need to look like a model, or you need to look like the woman who teaches your Zumba class. It, it's not about that. It's about feeling good and feeling comfortable in your own skin and having the energy and the strength to be able to do what you want to be able to do and what you need to be able to do in your own life. And I would encourage you just do something small if that's all you can do, even if you Google healthy meals or or um, go on YouTube and look at some of the workouts that are on YouTube that you could do for free. Um, or, or check out a, go to the library and you could check out a DVD, a workout DVD if you're feeling like you don't want to spend any money or you wouldn't know what to buy. You don't have to buy a $300 program off of an in infomercial. Uh, I've done some of those, they're great. But you can also just go for a walk around the block. Anyway, I just wanted to share with you some ideas on why it's important to be where you want to be physically. And so I hope that that helps you and we'll talk to you soon.